Yo what's up guys this is Apex here welcome back to a brand new video and the Vita 3k emulators version 5 has finally launched I guess the developer of Vita 3k emulator is providing one main update every month so this right here is the changelog of Vita 3k version 5 release notes are as follows added OpenGL ES renderer now this means that low end devices will be supported with the Vita 3k android as old devices usually have OpenGL ES 3.2 new memory mapping methods double buffer and page table has been added fixed L2 R2 overlay buttons improved touch handling and few other internal changes now there has also been a rebase to Vita 3k PC version so if you are interested in that you can read the changelog it's available on their discord server now let's just go ahead and open the Vita 3K emulator. There we go. Fail to get current compatibility database, check firewall internet access or try again later. My internet is turned on so I don't know what's the problem. Let's just go ahead and click on OK and let's choose the uh, login. Afterwards we'll enter into Vita 3K successfully. Let's go to configuration, let's go to settings and apply our best settings for Vita 3K Android. So modules mode should be automatic afterwards in CPU. Uh, the CPU backend should be dynamic, enable optimization should be enabled, GPU, we don't need to add a custom driver as this device has Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, so it comes with the Qualcomm Vulkan drivers, but if you guys have a low end Android device or a Snapdragon processor with Adreno 6 series GPU, I definitely 100% recommend you guys to use the turnip driver, it will make sure your performance is way better. But as you can see there has been some sort of glitch where I am unable to read the settings or change any of this. Vita 3K Android is nowhere stable, it has lot of development still left to go, lot of games should be compatible. The one game which I am very excited to emulate on Vita 3K Android is the NFS Most Wanted 2012 Remastered. It was one of my favorite racing games and I really hope that Vita 3K Android supports it very soon. Let's just go ahead and uh, go back to configuration settings. We were at GPU, as I told you guys, in the backend renderer, you can now choose OpenGL as well. So you just saw <laughs> the whole uh, settings interface just drifted to the left. I guess it needs to be fixed ASAP. Device orientation doesn't really matter, it seems. Uh, we'll try out OpenGL renderer for now. For now, uh, I'll switch back to Vulkan renderer because latest devices are better in emulating games with Vulkan renderer. Uh, An histotropic filtering uh, 1x, internal resolution scaling is also 1x, let's go to system and the settings has been fixed, okay. Uh, and that's going to be it, let's just go ahead and click on save and let's close. To start off we'll be testing out Uncharted Golden Abyss, let's click on start and the game just crashed, let's reopen. If the emulator keeps on crashing then you know that OpenGL ES uh, isn't really supported on my device, yeah guys, it keeps on crashing. Uncharted Golden Abyss does work fine though. Uh, but I think it's due to the renderer. Let's go to settings. Let's go to GPU. Select the Vulkan backend renderer. Afterwards, we'll scroll down and click on save. Okay. And immediately you can see that uh, the issue which we were seeing right here has been fixed. Uh, and the game has started. These are the differences between OpenGL and Vulkan renderer. Now, sometimes OpenGL renderer will work better with few games and sometimes Vulkan renderer will be definitely better. So you just need to do some testing. OpenGL supports old devices. Vulkan is great for getting better performance and less issues. Let's just go ahead and click on touch to start, continue. Continue prologue, yes. And I have heard that they have added uh, the L2 R2 button. So let's go to overlay. And you can see L2 R2 triggers will be displayed only if PS TV mode is enabled. There we go, the game has successfully started and let me start off by telling you guys that the audio output is very crisp. Before it used to have some issues, now the audio quality seems to have improved at least for my device. Let's just go forward and see if there are any dips in frame rate. I can see some stuttering. By the way, the device which I am using for today's video has Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor and still we are getting about 22-23 FPS which is not that great as this device is literally capable of doing 60 FPS Nintendo Switch emulation. So when the shaders are being compiled, uh, you will see some stuttering where the FPS will drop down. But in all honesty, let me tell you the truth that Vita 3K cannot be used for low end devices. That's just the truth guys. It lags quite a lot even on high end devices. And even though the developer has kept Android 8.0 or above as the minimum requirement, still it's completely unplayable on low end devices. That's why it will take a lot of time for the emulator to get optimized and only then will be able to see full speed PS Vita emulation on Android. That's going to be it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. See you guys tomorrow. 
गुड बाय